G'day scrappers, welcome to part three of this scrap marathon and uh, we're just uh, continuing on here. I've been pretty busy in between videos so what I want to really get done um, in this part of the video are at least this front row of um, servers and some PCs. So I just want to get rid of this front row just to make it feel like uh, we're getting down on levels because it just looks a little bit overwhelming. I might even knock off some off the top as well just to uh, really bring this pile down and uh, yeah uh, and probably we just want to empty this bin it's mostly got cables so I'm gonna have to process a lot more cable uh, just because I'm running out of bins and uh, yeah and then I'll probably get onto these as well so uh, pretty big uh, day ahead of me today so I've got the the first one I took off that pile right here, ready to go. And, uh, and I'm also going to go and do a uh, scrap metal run, as well as uh, some cable. And we'll see what else I can uh, take along. But I'm taking uh, my clean, clean steel. So we'll, uh, we'll scrap out a few PCs to get some more steel. And uh, yeah, then I'll go and do the, the scrap metal run as well. And uh, we'll get there, guys. And uh, can't wait to get into the garage uh, eventually and uh, really uh, start uh, getting into it. All right, let's, uh, let's go for it. All right, let's get on with this marathon. And so, as much as I need to get rid of uh, as many PC towers today to uh, get the steel to take to the scrapyard, uh, I do want to get into some of those bins with uh, oddball things, so uh, I'll try and uh, mix and match what I'm scrapping today. And uh, yeah, we'll just uh, have a look at. what else we can uh, get out of this so this one's a little bit lean it's only got three ram sticks it could have had <laughs> there's eight slots here and eight slots here so it could have been anything this uh, server but um, unfortunately it's only got one CPU and only three rams so <laughs> oh well we get what we can get at least we've got you know this one here this radiator or i sell them as copper aluminium radiators this is mostly aluminium these pipes are copper though and so we can just get away with it being a copper aluminium radiator but in this case most of the weight is still in the aluminium but and it doesn't weigh much at all so it's not going to uh, really make much difference in the uh, in the bin but Still, we just take it. Um, so, yeah, I did finally get delivery of my P1 drill bits. So now I'm using the two drills, uh, the impact driver with the bigger P PH2, and the screwdriver that I just bought with the PH1 so it's already proven to be handy um, because I did scrap out a lot of uh, a lot of those uh, kiosk table uh, tablets the, those things that that I picked up recently so I scrapped them all out there must have been I don't know probably 80 of them 70 80 uh, so that turned out really good. Uh, they're all in the van waiting for um, me to take off and do the scrap run. And yeah, so it's been a pretty, quite a productive week, obviously, with not much else happening. And I can, I can pretty much uh, safely predict that I'm not going to get any calls for a few weeks. Uh, because most businesses have closed down 
and yeah just uh i haven't gotten any for uh, over a week now and i don't expect to get any calls or anyone wanting to recycle uh, even uh, guys that are selling me circuit boards uh, obviously they need to wait until uh, our lockdown is over so can't do much i'm just going to have to uh, i mean as i've mentioned it's kind of a blessing in disguise because it's going to before i get anything else in because i can't go street scrapping i can't do anything um it's going to well it's going to change everything it's going to uh allow me to get my levels right down i mean i might end up having no pcs at all uh and while it's not going to help the bottom line it's it it will help me uh move on with other stuff and uh make some more more interesting videos that are well videos that i want to make and uh you know sort of uh, have a little bit more fun rather than thinking oh you know i've got to do a whole bunch of pcs today i've got to do a whole bunch of this you know empty bins and uh, you know i'd I can't wait for actually to be able to walk out here and and think oh well I'll just uh, you know what am I going to do I can do pretty much anything I want to do there's nothing urgent and it's just going to be great to uh, you know spend like a whole day just fiddling around with uh, things I, I need to sort out a lot of my goal recovery things um, you know um, redistribute uh, distribute things into new containers bigger containers uh, it's it's, it's going to be good so i'm really looking forward to it and uh yeah it'll uh i won't know myself <laughs> after a while who knows uh you know before sp uh, spring comes along or just as it's coming along, I might even have a chance to uh, reorganize my vegetable garden. Uh, I just want to grow a few more things for the chickens. And <laughs> things, you know, like uh, greens, kale and uh, things like that. Just so I've got more food for the chickens instead of uh, just buying it and they like their greens so but a pretty uh, significant week this week because as far as our uh, gold is concerned um, amazingly uh, gold has uh, for the first time ever reached two thousand dollars US an ounce so that's just you know fantastic uh for all you uh gold stackers and gold recovery people uh, people that are holding on to uh, things for gold um well it's never it's never been two thousand dollars an ounce us an ounce in the history of uh gold so You can't complain about that. Obviously, a, a lot of uh, investors are, you know, trying to protect their their money, and they're they're putting more money into into gold, and just as a safe haven, because uh, who knows what can happen with uh, the stocks. And you wouldn't want all your money in stock market at the moment because you just don't know you know for quite some time how the economy is going to be is going to end up um you know after this pandemic i'd imagine that you know someone's going to have to pay for it in the end
kind of get this stubborn motherboard out. Uh, yeah, so it was a nice surprise. To uh, oh. yeah, to see gold go up so high. Uh, A very positive thing for for people into gold. There we go. Finally. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, what do we got here? Uh, oh yeah, they're actually they're four gigabyte RAM sticks, but being server, a lot harder to sell. These ones almost look like they're being water damaged. Anyway, uh, looks like a nice CPU, current style. Um, okay, here. Yeah, so it's a Xeon uh, server CPU. It might be uh, sellable. We'll check it out. I just. Uh, I don't even bother putting things on, you know, even uh, CPUs on eBay anymore. I just uh, happy to get half the value from my buyer, or so. But a uh, pretty good motherboard. It's got a little little RAM-looking kind of card here. You can just put that in RAM. Uh, yeah, obviously it's got the steel. Uh, CPU socket, so it's a uh, little bit lower value than if it was the older school plastic, uh, but still good weight. And yep, yeah, I'll clean that up and take that to um, my buyer. These are uh, little uh, battery things, not much use. I've got a little circuit board in there, might try and pull out. So with the price of gold going up, and I did mention in the last video that uh, I was in talks with my buyer to try and get a little bit higher prices, and so I've been successful in that. So for those people that are that bring me circuit boards to sell uh, for me to buy, um, yeah, look out for a little update video coming soon just uh, some things went up and some things still didn't go up um, are mostly just PC motherboards uh, they didn't go up and there is a reason for that it's because uh, PC motherboards yeah aren't really that crash hot for gold recovery you know um, they're okay but the main thing is it's the current motherboards aren't that good and so uh, it's a balance for the buyers um, obviously you know they still make pretty good money from the older style like places like in America um, board buyers there they they have different prices for different types of motherboards and so for the very current cheaper style motherboards they're not paying much at all um, and they're paying more for the older versions and um, but here in Australia we don't have so many uh, grades of motherboards it's just too confusing and uh, it's just not worth doing so instead we're uh, must be an easier way to get this board out instead the buyers just pay motherboards just one price all mud all PC motherboards uh, so that's okay it's it's just a lot easier I mean I would hate to have four different grades of motherboards and have to have four different tubs um, 
just for PC motherboard. It would just get out of hand and way too confusing for everyone. So, so PC motherboards haven't gone up, but although I'm still putting them up a, a little bit, not a great deal. It's a little uh, back plane board actually. It's got a whole heap of uh, um, hard drives in there. That's good. But uh, things that are noticeably that have gone up are, are uh, low grade boards, finally. Um, got a little bit of extra for them. Uh, these hard drives, 300 gigabyte SAS drives, not bad. Yeah, uh, mother, uh, low grade boards went up, mid grade boards went up, server grade boards went up, and uh, laptop boards went up. So, all the boards except for PC motherboards. So, can't complain about that, makes sense to me. And probably uh, laptop motherboards were the, mo the biggest uh, winner uh, and mid-grade boards. So look out for my new price video. And for those of you, obviously people aren't bringing me boards at the moment because of lockdown. So, um, well, it's going to turn out good for you because when you do get to bring me the boards, the prices will be more than you would have gotten anyway. So, win-win. So it's all, all good. I don't actually have to take this out. Uh, yeah. So, awesome. I can't wait to uh, send in my next batch of boards now that uh, uh, you know, I know I'm going to get a little bit more, and also, oh, also I forgot the uh, slot cards or PCI cards. Um, I used to buy them with motherboards, same price, but uh, the motherboards didn't go up, but the PCI cards did. So I'm going to have uh, a separate grade for PCI cards this time again. Uh, Okay. Um, so there's a. Just got to get the little power board out from under, underneath here. And finish it off. So really good news, and uh, you know, um, when I spoke to my buyer about the prices, um, you know, and. I really put my case forward and then uh, lo and behold a few days later gold goes up to US 2000 an ounce so I sent him a message saying hey how's that gold's gone up to 2000 US first time in history <laughs> maybe that sped him up a little bit to get me better pricing <laughs> I don't know but you know because it's not just for me, it's, it's you know, to get better prices for, for uh, local scrappers here. Um, you know, it's not hard, uh, easy to, to scrap things, you know, to make a living out of scrapping. And, you know, I think uh, all of us scrappers deserve a little bit extra. Uh, you know, if gold's going up, geez, why aren't we getting our, you know, better prices for stuff that contains gold? So, I'm not sure of the gold price today. I didn't uh, actually look, but uh, I'm hoping that uh, 2000 US an ounce isn't where it's, you know, just stops or and goes down from there. I, I hope it keeps keeps rising and uh, who knows 
maybe uh, it won't be long till we're uh, starting to talk about three thousand dollars US an ounce. Now that would be uh, that would create a frenzy on gold recovery stuff again. People would be going uh, nuts. I'll be getting. Uh, messages you know from people all over the place saying oh where can I get gold you know where can I get my PCs again yeah well same place but the competition's tough out there for those wanting to pick up e-waste so you're up against uh, a lot of others but you got to be in it to win it and for those that are stockpiling gold recovery stuff, um, well, you're winning all the time, you know. So, I've just got to take off these, these plastic things. They just go into plastic recycling and then this cavity is going straight into the van for clean pressing steel. Hopefully the prices are still good and hopefully the scrapyard is actually still open because <laughs> it's mostly, it's, they, they have said it's mostly for essential services but hopefully the scrapyard has applied for uh, permission to keep going. Don't have much clean steel because it's mostly in the van. Someone asked recently what I do with my screws. Obviously screws are clean, clean steel. So they go into my clean pressing steel. Well, we're done. One big service scrapped. Just got to clean up a few things. Did get six good little hard drives. Two nice power supplies. Um, got good gold fingers. Uh, these days, um, you know, if you obviously if you take off the gold fingers. I don't buy them. It's just like if you uh, cut the cords off big power, PC power supply, I don't buy them anymore. They've got to be complete. So if you do want to cut your cords off or you do want to take your gold fingers off, then I suggest take off this whole casing and sell the board as a low grade board and balances out that way. Um, because the gold, uh, the low grade boards have gone up a little bit, just makes it a little bit more worthwhile. This this board here, uh, it's yeah, it's close to a mid grade, probably most likely just a, a low grade board. Um, but obviously, we want to take off quite a lot of wire here, and I am taking wire to the scrapyard, so I'll take that. Uh, all right, I'll just clean up here and move on to something else since I'm on a roll with servers might as well continue and uh, same with these for me when they got gold fingers personally I prefer to open up the casing sell the steel the steel get my gold fingers and uh, sell the the rest as a uh, low grade board, but usually with these ones, there's a side board that's also a mid grade board, plus you get a little bit of wire. So, um, because we want the gold, especially now, um, we just go for it. No worries at all. And uh, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm happy for the guys that have held off with their stockpiling, you know, with their gold recovery and decided, you know, instead of uh, 
wasting money and time on uh, goal recovery. Just keep your, um, you know, like I've been saying, stockpile your stuff. Don't worry about it. Um, we know what they are. Like this circuit board, we know what it is. We know how much gold is in it um, or, you know, roughly what we're going to get. Uh, so you don't have to... Uh, take the risk of gold recovery, spending all the money on chemicals. Uh, you know, you, you've still got, you know, at the end of it, you've still got to find ways to get rid of your chemicals, uh, the spent stuff. Um, sure, some people uh, know how to uh, dilute the chemicals and uh, I, I can't think of the wording right now but uh, you know to to make the chemicals uh, safe to dispose of but you know well this one this one's you know kind of one of my favorite types of servers these they're not too heavy um, well not too big so they don't take up as much room and they're packed with stuff huge board um, and yeah they're just packed to the rafters with stuff we've got slot cards here riser card or backplane board in this case it's got eight ram sticks it's got two um heat sinks at two cpus uh another card here one of these little cards with the uh, uh, thing so uh, I think I've mentioned before maybe I've made a mistake when I was talking about it but this is a mid-grade board if you leave these fingers on if you take these gold fingers off then it's a low grade board because it's basically just aluminium um, what you're better off really doing is taking off this aluminium and um, and taking off your gold fingers and then uh, I'm not sure I can't remember what's underneath it might actually be a mid-grade board once you've done that and so you're getting three components here gold fingers extruded aluminium and a mid-grade board if you depopulate this whole thing uh, let's just do it rather than just talking about it and we'll see what we can get out of it so rear's reasonably straightforward really four screws this side not much to it and remember the screws they're clean aluminium here I'm uh, currently getting 23 cents a kilo I actually just call the the scrapyard to make sure that they're their times and they that they're still open so they're still operating so that's good um, if they were closed for the duration well I wouldn't know what to do because I would have so much scrap metal it wouldn't be funny uh, I wouldn't be able to you know, it wouldn't be any difference in scrapping stuff. So here we've got two pieces of extruded. And now, um, these little things here, I'm not really sure what they are. They, they look like the gold band crystal oscillators, but they're not. Um, just try and get into one. Yeah, can't really see much to it there. It'll probably be silver recovery, but as I said, now you know this can now go as a, a mid-grade board. So um, no problem. All we want before we do that is the fingers. Now some people would sell me the whole thing as a mid-grade board. Just take off the uh, extruded aluminium. And if they do that, well, before I throw it into mid-grade boards, I'm going to take off these gold fingers anyway. So you might as well do it yourself if you want to get um, more value and sell me these clean gold fingers. You know, when I say clean, there is quite a bit of difference between gold fingers that are clean or gold fingers that have got a lot of green circuit boards sticking out. You know, you're halving your value and sometimes even less so even this little part here that hasn't got gold right try and trim off so all we got is is just gold even though this gold plating isn't that good um as uh, others 
it's quite shiny but still now with uh, two thousand dollars us an ounce just go for it just grab it all <laughs> it's uh yeah pretty awesome uh um yeah i'm just really happy for everyone and for those people that are um gold stackers even silver but silver not so much gold gold is where it's at to tell you the truth um, i don't trust silver sure it can have its big rises also has its big falls but uh yeah i'm just not sure of the future of silver gold not a problem because you got so many uh people that are they're not even into gold but they they invest in it because it's a safe haven and they're just uh, protecting their money. I actually had uh, someone comment a while ago when I mentioned, oh, gold, you know, who knows? You know, gold could go up to $40,000 an ounce. <laughs> Possible. It should be. Um, and then I had the per a person comment and say, oh, well, that won't be any good because if gold is $40,000 an ounce, then a loaf of bread is $3,000. And I said, well, I thought, well, yeah, that that might be right but at least with uh one ounce of gold you're going to be able to buy you know 14 loaves of bread whereas otherwise you've got to pay three thousand dollars cash for a loaf of bread so um because you know in the meantime you keep that cash in the bank it's not doing anything you might get uh two percent interest <laughs> uh, if you lock it away for 10 years you might get four percent interest uh, but you know at two percent interest um you know a hundred thousand dollars invested in the bank at two percent it's two thousand dollars a year so in 10 years you're going to have a hundred and twenty thousand from a hundred thousand gold whereas in 10 years you invested that thousand dollars in gold that's half an ounce well if um sorry if you invested uh, ten thousand a hundred thousand dollars in gold that's uh what is it 50 ounces um and if gold goes up to forty thousand dollars an ounce uh what do you got a few million so that's the difference so i find that argument quite bizarre you know oh if gold goes up to you know forty thousand then bread's going to be a three thousand well yeah it will and if you so that means if you don't have gold you're going to be in for a bit of trouble <laughs> Uh, it's funny but you know i mean i've been uh you know dabbling into stacking gold for quite a while you know i don't have that much and when gold just sits there and goes up 10 bucks and down 10 bucks and it's not doing anything for a couple of years you know it, it's just sitting there it's you know what do you do with it you know it doesn't actually do anything <laughs> um you know apart from being something nice to look at but the problem with you know holding gold again these are actually that's quite much better than the uh, gold fingers off the power supply unit i showed you before see how it's nice and flat good yeah because the more gold you hold obviously it becomes a security issue you know and and that that's been my main issue all the time is you know i don't want to be sitting on my whole life savings in in gold because uh you know anything can happen and it's yeah it becomes a security risk so that's why uh a lot of my gold is actually in gold recovery stuff, you know? Right. 
BGA chips. So this one's just for the uh, gold corner BGA chips, right? This is just my working tub as I go. <laughs> Kimchi. It's a, it's a mostly a Korean uh, staple. They eat kimchi for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> it's quite expensive, actually. Like one kilo costs about 12 bucks here. But I actually like it. I like this fermented... Well, it's it's not really for it's not like sauerkraut. It's just a uh, cabbage in chili and their sauce and stuff. It's, I, I like it as a condiment to uh, stir fries and stuff. And we got the uh, the higher grade BGAs with uh, no gold corner chips, but there's no real plastic sticking out. Mostly from uh, memory. Really good. These. These little flat ones, Cisco's, awesome. Um, but this is my working tray of gold fingers. So as I go, you know, that's where I prefer to uh, invest, have my gold investment in. Because even though it takes up a lot more space, um, it's scattered around everywhere and uh, it comes in all kinds of um, shapes and forms so uh, it's easier to store just in barrels and bins and buckets all over the place if you ever got robbed well, they're only going to be able to find one or two things, you know. Most of your stock is, you know, still going to be with you. <laughs> um, so, like they can grab a, 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 a bin full of IC chips and I challenge them to actually carry it out because they're so heavy after a while. Okay, so these are like eight gig well, they're only, well, yeah, 8 gig. And these are 1 gig. That's a big difference. So with 8 gig server RAM, um, that's the, the lowest I can sell. These are actually really good. Um, they look like, you know, just looking at them, it looks like, oh, yeah, aluminium heatsink, you know. <laughs> But you just got to pick one up and realize, hang on, this is way too heavy to be aluminium. Uh, obviously, that's aluminium. Gold anodized just for prettiness. Okay. But that, whilst all that's aluminium, this is tin plated copper. Just got to dig into it, and you'll you know you'll see the the, uh, the orangeness of copper inside there. Uh, so this is a heavy solid chunk, and with these ones, some people. Uh, like to take off the fins, you know, and try and clean it up and just sell this as tin plated copper. Uh, for me, it balances out. I just sell these as copper aluminium radiators. Um, still get reasonably good value. Don't have to waste time cleaning it up. Um, but, you know, if you do want to get a little bit extra value, you're probably better off taking off the fins and selling this as tinned. tin copper. I've got two beautiful ones there. Really heavy, you know. Awesome. And so, time to get this motherboard out. If we can work out how to do it. Um, And same with these, my favourite plugs of this kind. The 
because they're not the normal IDE type pins they're just solid you know fully plated gold pins in there so these these are a very high gold recovery really good stuff two rows this is the stuff we want okay So as you can probably tell, I'm quite excited over gold at the moment. It's just, uh, you know, even though I wouldn't sell my gold still, but I just like to see, it just, you know, confirms to me that when times are, are a little bit down, gold is the safe haven. Gold is where it's going, where things are. And it just inspires me more to go for the gold. Don't be shy. <laughs> you know, I start to look at every little little piece and say, yep, well, it's not much, but it's still, that'll do, I'll take it. So I want to clean this up as well and at least sell this cavity as uh, clean steel to get our value. It's the mid-grade board, but still bit of weight there see what I mean by uh, me liking these kind of HP servers it's that they're they're not as chunky easier to handle but they're just look at the size of that board you know does it even go into the camera <laughs> um, you know massive so uh, even though there's not a whole lot on it, but it doesn't matter because we're going for weight. Um, so obviously you need to take off this, this caddy. And on the back, well, there's a couple of tantalums I can pick off. But apart from that, it's uh, just sold as a server board. And well, it's worth more today than it was last week to me with server boards going up a little bit it all helps you know they they haven't gone up like uh i would hope they would you know but because uh boards balance out for the the re refiner and not all like this server board um is probably only half the goal recovery as an as a the next server board you know so The only option would be for um, to send to a toll refiner and just getting a percentage of what they actually recover, but uh, that's too risky. I would, you know, I'd much rather just sell, and whatever happens, you know, after that, it's none of my business, you know. Oh, these are nice CPUs. Might have to put one of these in my collection. Opteron, AMD Opteron, right? So it's a pinless, but it's a whole pad. So just something a little bit different, you know? You know, line up a hundred of them in a box, in a block, and uh, that'd look good. So I'll definitely keep one for my personal little stack. All right, 
I'll clean the rest of this up later. Just got to take off this back thing there. Uh, here, again, I've got to take off this steel plate. It's just not fair trying to sell steel to uh, to my buyer, and especially now with higher prices. But you know, if you bring me server boards, make sure you take off this big plate of steel. We've already uh, took off this part and yeah it's very heavy and for the price of boards it's just uh you know it's only worth 23 cents a kilo <laughs> the battery rudely interrupted me and go by going flat as usual <laughs> always a sign that i talk too much or <laughs> scrap too long that uh, when the batteries goes goes out on me but, uh, yeah I think as I was saying now that steel that weighs a decent amount and for server boards especially it would be absolutely ripping the guys off because um, if I did that like you can hide that you you know, obviously I don't bring one board at a time. I bring a whole tub full of boards. So they're not going to go through every one and see. But they'll notice it later. And if they don't notice it, they send it to their processor. Well, you know, by weight, they're getting less recovery. So they're getting less money. And then that means if I kept, if I was doing that like over the last couple of years, um, I probably wouldn't have got a, a, a price rise on boards um, now. You know, because they would just simply go by what they they've been recovering, how much they've been getting for, you know, per ton and so on, and they say, okay, well, we pay X amount per ton, um, and this is what we're getting. So, so that's why they could pay me a little bit more on um, on scrap boards, but if if they weren't getting much. Well, obviously, can't expect them to be uh, increasing their prices. So, it all balances out in the end. And by being fair to my buyer and bringing him good, clean product, just like it should be. Um, well, finally, I got a little bit... Uh, of a bonus back and it's not like I said it's it's not just for me sure I process my own e-waste um, and so uh, the price rise is for me as well but it's for all the smaller scrappers that are bringing me boards and you know, if they're getting a better price um, you know, it helps them out too, and that's what it's about. hard to tell sometimes whether it's uh, yeah so just you know a very little amount of plastic to remove to have this whole thing now as clean steel and here yeah. And that weighs quite a decent amount so you know it all adds up a couple of bucks all right well that's done move on to something else now so this one looks like it was used as a like a workstation um,
nice and clean one anyway. There's a big PSU. Yeah, not bad this one. Um, again, I'll end up using this as clean steel. one's quite quite easy to process not much to these ones rather than throwing it into I get clean steel and if you want to add a bit of value even though you get some plastic I always take off these fins just so it, it really looks like a motor rather than you know, something else so we can just throw that into motors now. And it probably still works out a little bit better than um, just throwing it into pr pressing steel anyway. And, and these little plugs here, they've got like little uh, gold fingers in there instead of pins. So I always, I always take these ones, see? Nice little gold fingers there. Clean that up. Wires, good. A uh, couple of sock cards, good. PCI cards, nice, but um, well, look at that. Pity it's a copper top. Yeah, once I was explaining in my uh, uh, amusing gold recovery video uh, with BGAs that the black part, you know, don't doesn't have much gold. It's these ones are the ones that I meant. I just got confused. I wasn't, um, haven't thought about it for quite a while. But these ones are, you can see that round circle, that's a copper top. So these ones don't have, um, don't really have the gold in the in the top um, as much as the ones that are just plain black. But, uh, but still, um, sometimes these can be really good too. Uh, underneath this cap can have uh, quite a lot of bonding wires in there. And this, so this lock card with this full size aluminium heatsink, you've really got to take this off um, to sell this as a PCI card uh, because it's just too much, uh, especially now because they're a little bit more, um, they they go for a little bit more than motherboards. Um, yeah, you really got to take this uh, heatsink off. It's just too much uh, dead weight for compared to the amount that they're paying for bo uh, those boards, so, you know. It's common sense, really, you know, and obviously, like, like this one here, it's only got a small heat sink, that's fine. But if it had a motor, uh, like a little fan on it, then you have to take it off. But a little heat sink like that, that's fine. Even though this one, you know, obviously not worth uh, going for the gold fingers because it's only such a tiny amount. So you just throw this into PCI cards. You know, it's all a balance, you know, especially when you're scrapping, you're trying to get the maximum value. Sometimes it's just not worth depopulating um, in order to get, because uh, you end up actually losing. Um, so this one takes a bit of work, but while well, I've got the case open, I want to get rid of these clips at least because they're clean steel. Yeah. And we'll turn this, this one into a copper aluminium radiator as well. So, nice. It's all good. There we go. Obviously, we've got to remove that. I might as well do it now. Get that steel as well. Yeah, that's pretty much what scrapping is all about. It's uh, trying to maximize your value. Obviously, uh, you know, um, a lot of you know by now that, you know, I know what I can sell and what I can't sell, I'm scrapping out. And so, you know, what, what doesn't sell, I scrap out. So that's 
copper aluminium radiator good you can get a bit of extra value there the same deal if you if you want sometimes I just don't have time to to uh, to do this with all my fans again I'll take off all the fins and turn that just into a little motor you won't notice uh, the difference in value when you you do three or four of them but once you've got a whole bucket full then you know then it is a few bucks you know Just as I was waiting for the batteries uh, to all charge up again, uh, just before this PC, I had to go uh, quickly to the supermarket to just go and get a couple of things that I'm cooking for dinner. I just needed a couple of ingredients that I forgot. And uh, I just walked past the meat section and <laughs> there's only a little bit of pork. That's just big pork roasts. There's really not much there at all there, there's no beef forget about beef altogether <laughs> um, no no kind of mints but yeah still a little bit of lamb but no sausages no quick things for people that got kids they just want to whip up something quick but minced meat, yeah. It's like gold. So, unfortunately, uh, it's just a regular PC size one, one CPU socket. But, hey, four RAM sticks. What do we got? Only one gigabyte, so not worth resale. Take out my little old school pinless CPU we're done still at least it's a good size motherboard this one um, even though it's only PC but good weight radio so Um, actually what I might do I might take out the clean steel I think I'm just going to uh, fill this up because I've got some dirty steel stuff and just call this one a dirty steel so I, I can't be bothered um, not interested in the DVD and uh, don't want to take off this cover alright well I'll clean up this bit and uh We'll go on to uh, probably one more PC, and uh, we just got to. I just got to do as many PCs as I can today, so <coughs> uh, most of them I'm going to just do off video because uh, just too many PCs in one video. <laughs> so I've got 12 of these um, little Lenovo thingamajigs, EMC Square. Um, they got nice little hard drive caddies in there, but unfortunately all the hard drives been removed it's a little back plane there so yeah just a little PC I've cut myself again always seem to cut myself doing things this time it wasn't scrapping it was uh, <laughs> cutting up cabbage in the kitchen I'm making a, a a batch of sauerkraut and, but a little different than just like small pieces of sauerkraut like you would buy normally um, whole cabbage whole cabbage head sauerkraut so it's uh, for a special dish at the moment I just can't buy whole um, sauerkraut cabbage heads so I thought well bugger it I'll make me own. So there we go. There's really 
not much to it they're just basically for hard drive um, for storage uh, these came as part of the the bar system terminals and all that so this would have just been for their data for their sales and stuff not a great deal to it and but served the purpose of I guess what it needed to do just keep track of all the sales Probably a little. Oh, yeah, the back plane board stuck into it. So, these are good as anything to get rid of at the moment. So, I might as well just uh, uh, rip straight into all 12, get them out the way. And because they're bulky. I'll fill up the van with them and go to the scrap metal yard. So okay, we've got a little back plane board, but at least it's got some gold fingers we can uh, we can pinch. So still uh, ends up as a mid grade back plane. Um, so we've got the motherboard. There we go, one ram stick. <laughs> we've got two gigabyte ram. Yeah. And it's an onboard CPU. So, but because it is a motherboard, it's, it's got the little fan in there. You've got two options. You can be a little bit sneaky and leave the heatsink over the CPU. Um, main thing we're, we're concerned about here is just the, the fan the little motor it's uh, just too low value for it to uh, go as part of this as a motherboard so I'll just get that little motor out if I can yeah, just put that in motors should really come off clean up all right little battery out there we go tiny little motherboard ready to go to be sold as a motherboard so <laughs> really quick pretty simple scrap out and just wondering whether I should send this off as dirty steel or clean it up then I just end up with a chunk of plastic but still probably get better value obviously as clean steel because um, if I use them as dirty steel they're just going to take up quite a lot of space in the driveway since I'm not taking dirty steel in yet oh well take the LCD off can, it's pretty much just uh, throw it in low grade boards when they've got LCD screens that's all I do just low grade that'll do uh, just got to get this plastic out so I'll be able to knock these off pretty quickly and get away with that just got to get rid of this fan there we go just a simple chunk of uh, clean steel so I've got too many angles on it so I can't really crush it up. Just gonna throw it in the van like that. Oh. Oh. 
it's upside down, but nice package. All right, might do a few more. They uh, would have been great if they had hard drives in them, you know. Jeez, would have been awesome. Yeah. This one only had two slots, but potentially could have had four hard drives in each one. Um, certainly would increase the value, but because it's a, a retail business and obviously all their sensitive data is on there, their sales and everything, they're not going to let it go. And I'm sort of happy for that because if they want uh, me to destroy the data, you know, then I have to at least drill holes in every one and just, just messy and takes time for no value um, to me at all. Some companies, recycling companies, they, they have a data destruction service but it's it's not cheap it's about nearly ten dollars for every hard drive but it's not just uh you know they have to guarantee data destruction and also provide certification and all that and to make it legal and they have to also i've had uh, clients ask me for certificates of destruction and certificates of recycling and I say to him look um, my business is you know a very straightforward uh, recycling business I don't have um, I'm not accredited I don't have the ISO ratings and all that um, so I can draw up a certificate but it doesn't it's not worth the paper it's written on and that's what I actually tell them so it's just you know it's not worth anything because I'm not actually certified in that way and it uh, to be certified well you've got to have be a, a more professional organization because um, well it's a lot of paperwork and you know getting audited and stuff like that and uh, it actually costs like each like my buyer, he's accredited and he has uh, like four different accreditation certificates and each one costs $15,000 um, for the fee plus uh, a lot of man hours to actually get it all sorted out. A lot of paperwork and stuff. So that's way out of my league. So if they want that... They have to go elsewhere. And usually, after I tell them that, then they say, oh, no, we don't really need it, you know, because they know that they've got to pay for it and it doesn't come cheap, you know, and they're call it, calling me in the first place to get uh, a free recycling service. <laughs> a few weeks ago, I got a, a new... Uh, and potentially very big client with quite a few buildings in the city. Uh, they're just trialing me out with uh, one building for now. But, you know, they also want bins. And so I've put uh, a bin in their place. Not only a bin, but they wanted a bin with locks. So that, that was an extra cost. And um, I don't charge for the bins. Other companies charge monthly rental for the bins um, so you know free service free bins what more do you want you want certification on top of that and nah, you only get so much for free <laughs> but I'm not expecting any of them to call for uh well, at least a month until all this is over 
Yeah, very interesting. This one seems a little bit heavier. Might have a hard drive or two in there. Probably these sturdy ones. No. No. Just my imagination. <laughs> yeah, well. What do you do? So. I'm sure some of you guys are busy scrapping as well and going through the motions. Once you've done, a, you know, I've done a couple, you know, then it's, there's no surprises, so it's, you know, but it gets easier because I know, you know, what screws to take out at what stage and so on. So. Yeah, everything kind of speeds up. Yeah, so when I finish with these, I'll probably go and do a scrap steel run. And I've got uh, mid-grade insulator wire. I've got low-grade insulator wire. And... I might even take in some brass as well just to get an update on all the all the things and I've got some chunky brass things so just want to get rid of them There's a motherboard well at least each one's got a little ram stick it all helps. Another one bites dust. All right, well, I'll keep going on here and finish all 12 of these and uh, move on to something else. Okay, well, with those 12 PCs out the way, thank goodness. Uh, um, I can uh, get onto something else. So I thought I'd do uh, at least one of these iMacs for now. This one's just been sitting on the edge of the garage, so it's gotten quite dirty and dusty. But um, I've got I've got at least twenty of them, and um, I used to be able to sell them when I used to pick them up from schools a lot. But they just don't sell anymore. My even the guy I used to sell them to gives them to me. And I've actually given them to scrappers. The last few scrappers that have come down, um, you know, I say to them, oh, you want a couple of these, you know? Um, they're, they're quite fiddly to scrap, but they're, they're, they are pretty good. Um, yeah, let me just Let's scrap this chicken, hey? <laughs> Hopefully, it stays down and out of my way. All right, so, yeah, as I said, these aren't, aren't too bad to scrap, but for those that have, haven't have scrapped many, it can get a bit daunting, because you just don't know where to start with these things. And I used to have a real good knack to scrapping these out, but because it's been so long, I've forgotten how best to get into it and where to where to start undoing screws. Uh, 
Okay, so obviously first things first. So you know I'm gonna just put this part in plastic recycling, but I just gotta move remove this piece of metal. I think if I can. Uh, I'll leave it to them. It'll go through the shredder and but yeah, these these Max gosh. I used to get so many from schools, it wasn't funny and uh and the last few batches that I got they were so good and clean that you know I kept a whole bunch but I need that space back and so I'm only going to uh, keep one maybe two in my just to, as collectible just to remember what they were like um, but I cannot remember how to where to start on these another one of those cases where I probably should have scrapped one out first and then then put the next one on video to show that you know oh, look how good I am <laughs> but this is what we want we want you know the real situation how we how it all sort of happens rather than uh, you know making fake videos you know So, I think I can at least get these speakers out for a start. And okay. Right. Now, I'll probably have to unscrew this screen out. So yeah, the guys that have taken a few of these in the last couple of weeks, um, they're probably going to have a bit of fun and they want to have torque screws, otherwise they're going to have a real hard time. Um, but you know I, I don't give away stuff that is just junk you know I, I I give away stuff that I know they're gonna get some reasonable value out of and uh, because they sell me boards uh, the motherboards gonna come back to me anyway <laughs> uh, except I gotta pay for it then <laughs> but it took a few pieces out of my sight Alright, so there we go. Got our screen. Lovely. Good good start. So it hasn't been too bad. We want our finger strip board since we're since it's there. See if your little fingers, gold fingers, they're uh, they're not like normal gold fingers, these are like flashed gold fingers. Quite low uh, gold recovery not even sure if it's even going to be worth going for them but hey with the price of gold almost anything is worth going for these days all right so i'll put this aside and well so you know pretty decent value uh, gotta get back down yeah, I mean, quite a decent sized motherboard, hard drive, couple of cards, got this uh, stand which is extruded aluminium, um, so, certainly you can't complain about them and, well, for the next 20 of them that I've got, I'll end up scrapping them all out.
you know, hard drive in each one, that's 20 hard drives. Uh, you know, two little RAM sticks, each one, that's 40 RAM sticks. So it adds up, 20 motherboards, 20 bits of steel. <laughs> Get this, uh, get this motherboard out, I think. The only thing here is getting this uh, standoff the right way. There's a really easy way and there's a hard way, so. I'll find out which one which way is best and uh, then everyone after that will be a lot easier. Okay, so there's our motherboard. What do you think? Pretty awesome, isn't it? Yeah, look, copper. Copper. Don't eat screws. Shush, stop whinging. <laughs> so, um, yeah, pretty good motherboard. Uh, there's a little uh, green fiber CPU. Always take them out. You know, still got the green, uh, the nice gold pins and yeah there's the motherboard and so here's our nice uh, copper aluminium radiator but in this case because it's a separate copper and you still got aluminium uh, copper pipes running through this very light aluminium so 95% of the weight is in the copper you know so it's uh, uh, much more valuable than just a copper aluminium radiator so in these ones I actually snip off the the copper ends still throw this into copper aluminium radiator because uh, that's what it is and it's just a matter of getting rid of these screws I've got the little sir clips on the back getting rid of the screws and we've got shush We've got some nice uh, candy copper here. So 20 of them. So that's 20 more chunks of copper. Can't complain there. Okay, nice, hey? So again, I don't melt these ones down because they're a little bit funny color when the bars come out. I just keep these as uh, my stockpile copper and probably end up one day just selling them to the scrapyard uh, when copper prices get irresistible come on out the way okay. so just get me hard drive here Were they 160 gigabyte hard drives? <laughs> so yeah, it's sort of like a. It's these are just one of those things to, when you scrap them. It's uh, it's unlike a PC where you kind of go all over the place anywhere, and you know you just sort of do it sort of in stages, step section by section, and it all comes together. 
it all comes apart. <laughs> no dramas. You know, it's, uh, these are really good for a chill out scrapping session. Uh, you can just sit there and, you know, pull things apart and have a little look. And, uh, so we've got our little power board here. Quite a heavy power board plate of copper underneath there. Um, it's just kind of like a power, you know, power board grade, nothing really much to it, but it does have MLCCs and black tantalum capacitors, you know, so it's one of those that I prefer to just depopulate. Good wads of wire. <coughs> now, for the uh, right. So, if I remember correctly, you can start taking off this whole bracket thing, but it's not really necessary um, just try to I know there's a uh, battery went flat as usual but yeah as I was saying this has got a uh, a series of torque screws here and this is what you need to remove to just get that stand out and the rest can stay on there, so you can sort of almost get rid of it as dirty steel. So, and to scrap these out, you need, you almost need a complete set of these torque screws. You need a small one like a T6, for, uh, and then a T9, or T10. Um, and probably even a T8. Yeah, everything's got, yeah, so you need at least probably four different torque screws um, to scrap these out. So I'm hoping, if I can remember correctly, they, the whole stand just slides away from the, the main spring hinge there and we should be in business well, that's a T9 I probably want a better fit so I need a I need the trusty T10 T10 is your most popular one when they're tight you got to get a good the right size otherwise if I tried um, really hard with the T9 I would have stripped it and turned the T9 into a T8 eventually into just nothing so when they're tight screws it's really important to get the right you know sc screwdriver onto it Okay, so that's the four screws. Now I'm hoping that it slides out. It looks like it. Yeah, there you go. So that's the best way. Well, I remember when I first started scrapping these IMAX out and uh, you know, I'd, I'd I'd go about trying to undo this whole frame and stuff, and uh, yeah, a real pain. And so now I can just clean up this wire and just throw this into dirty steel because it's got enough steel on it. Heavy bracket, even though this is a bit of cast aluminium, it's on a spring. It's almost impossible to 
um, for what it's worth it's just not worth uh, trying to uh, separate so I can leave the DVD player there and all that and it's even got aluminium foil so no, it certainly passes as dirty pressing steel well at my yard anyway okay just these little wires doesn't weigh much but there we go so dirty pressing steel with the brackets and everything on it nice chunk of uh, extruded aluminium right good we've got our motherboard just need to uh, take the battery out and the fan off got a power board a hard drive copper aluminium radiator very light but still good chunk of copper really good there and, uh, and uh, two ram sticks so it's all there bit of wire um, yeah can't complain little ball with some tantalums and MLCC's it's all good uh, all right well that was that I might do a, a few more servers I've got sitting here on the side because um, I just want to clean the steel up get them into a van I think uh, what we'll do now is I'll get them out the way and I'll see you at the scrapyard and we'll uh, unload what we've got and uh, take it from there Right, so the van's pretty much loaded. I've just got a little bit of room here to put in a couple of tubs extra of uh, insulated wire. Um, so this is all clean steel. There's all those little consoles that I scrapped out. Got three boards out of each one. Some of them um, had also those tiny little lead acid batteries. Uh, a lot of servers. I've just done a, a quite a bit more this morning and a um, few more PCs that didn't have covers so uh, they're good ones to send off as clean steel all right so yeah clear space for clean steel this is my dirty steel just building up slowly I haven't been doing many things um, to create more dirty steel until I get rid of the clean stuff um, so it's uh, it's going good uh, look at here I've uh, gotten down a lot from this first row of stuff uh, even got some stuff from the back there uh, getting there <laughs> I just I just noticed I didn't even notice before all these switches Cisco's but look at them <laughs> 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 in 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 29, 29 switches. I forgot all about these. They're all just sitting there and um, they actually make good clean pressing steel as well. But uh, certainly don't have room for them right now. But wow, switches are just never ending. Uh, can't believe how many I've done since I started this um, scrap marathon. Uh, so getting there but now what I need to do is I've got a feeling uh, because we're in lockdown that the scrapyard is um, going to uh, drop their prices again that's just my uh, feeling so I'm going to call them before I go uh, just to make sure because I if they've dropped their prices again on insulator wire I'm not going to send it to them and so uh, I'm just cleaning um, clearing out this bin of wire at the moment so I'll just continue doing this and uh, yeah I'll take a, a couple of extra tubs of of wire I've got a full bin in the van of uh, mid grade and also a bin of low grade so we'll just see uh, what the uh, scrap prices are uh, before I go and if they have dropped the insulator wire I'm going to bring it back I'm not going to sell it and that's why I need some more bins I've got to do this bin at least so I can um, 
continue putting insulated wire on in and uh, just uh, stockpiling it again until the uh, thing's over because uh, no, I'm not going to uh, this time um, get fooled into selling it for 20% or 30% less uh, for no reason at all. Copper hasn't gone down so uh, I'm not going to play that game. So we'll see how we go. I'll just continue on with this. So yeah, um, I just don't think it's fair that um, anyone, any kind of business takes advantage of um, situations like pandemic to say, oh, you know, let's increase our prices or, you know, in a scrapyard's case, let's, let's drop our prices because, um, yeah, that, that's a good enough excuse, you know. Oh, we're in a pandemic. Well, but yeah, but, uh, and we're in lockdown, but uh, they're not locked down. They're, they're still uh, willing to take the stuff. So, um, yeah, but I, I mean, I'm only speculating. I, I don't know. The, the prices could very well be the same. Um, uh, it should be at, at least $2.40 a kilo for insulator wire. But the la last time I went, it was $2.60 a kilo. So I, that's what I'm expecting between $2.40 and $2.60. Otherwise, no. Nah, I'll just uh, bring it back. And all I'll get rid of is my uh, clean pressing steel. Because, well, I can't bring that back. <laughs> and, you know... If uh, copper wire is down, then everything will go down, and including steel. So that won't be really fair. But uh, I've got no choice with my steel. I've got to. I've got to get rid of it. Um, like I said, I've almost got a full van of steel, and so. But more impressive is just you know what that represents. All the the things that I've scrapped out. That's that's what I'm happy about. I've have done a lot of PCs. Obviously I'm not gonna scrap every PC on video because uh, I've done a lot over the years. Everyone's seen what a PC looks like getting scrapped out, but you know, it's still interesting to see all uh, the different um, circuit boards that come out of them and stuff. But uh, yeah, um, doing videos, it, it does slow the whole process down a little bit and uh yeah i've just uh i've probably put about since uh the last little section of this video i'll probably put in about uh six hours of work to um to get levels down and to fill up the uh the van with all the clean steel so a lot of servers done and uh, all kinds of things um, but nothing really spectacularly interesting so uh, it's good thick thick wire that data cable that kind of blue data cable even though it's worth more than mid-grade insulated because we we don't get much um, very good prices for data cable sometimes it's quite low so but when it's black data cable I just put it through because I know what it's worth even if the scrapyard doesn't all right so yeah uh, just be good to go to the scrapyard and empty the van <laughs> because it's getting pretty heavy and if I need to go to the shops <laughs> it's, it's not that good but uh, I'm still looking for a van it's just hard when we're in lockdown you can't really go anywhere I mean there are car yards that uh, will bring the vehicle to you to buy but i haven't found anything in a car yard that i've wanted any van anyway but every time i find a van that i want to buy um yeah 
by the time I call them, it's I'm mean, usually uh, either too late or there's some other issue. The last one that I almost I would have bought, um, it was uh, oh, it was about an hour and a half drive, so it was going to be you know like. It, I couldn't make too many trips. It would have been just one trip. Yep, make the decision. Um, I'm going to buy it. Go and get the roadworthy, and I'll come and pick it up because I'd have to like Uber or something like that. Um, but I did a registration check on this last one, and it had finance, you know. And I said to the guy, "Oh mate, you know you owe finance on your vehicle." He goes, "Yeah, of course. You know, it's a business vehicle." It's on a lease plan. I said, well, I can't buy it if the uh, lease company hasn't released it because they own it. You know, he's, it, technically it's not his vehicle until he pays off that lease. I don't know what he's thinking, um, but he, who knows? He's probably sold it anyway to somebody that hasn't done the check. Uh, I mean, the check is worth it. It, it only costs three dollars, or even maybe even two dollars, to do it online, where you get instant, you know, notification. You know whether the vehicle is uh, owing any money. Um, there are also other checks to make sure that the vehicle hasn't been written off, or um, at one stage and repaired. You know, or uh, and the other um, important check. Uh, with well with Mercedes at least is the uh, Takata airbag check to make sure that um, the airbag's been replaced oh and actually this vehicle also not, not only did it have uh, finance pending but it, it also hadn't had the uh, the airbag put in so um quite risky airbag because they're faulty airbags they've been uh, known to uh, explode while people are driving so he hasn't bothered to go and uh, replace the airbag and well that's then I'd have to do it and that's another day of uh, you know got to first take it to some place and then wait you know it might be two days that's two days without a vehicle um, for them to replace the airbag so yeah there was unfortunately there were too many uh, warning bells on this this last vehicle that I almost bought so doesn't matter I'll find one eventually it's just really hard finding a second-hand van with uh, a lot of the things that I, I need you know or I want you know um, and there are even some things that I'm prepared to not have. Like I, I would prefer the six uh, six cylinder version of of the Mercedes van, um, but that's okay if if it's not six cylinder. I want things that uh, I don't want to have to do myself. Like I want a tow bar. I want. Um, uh, I would like a roof rack, but roof rack's not doesn't really bother me. Um, well, geez, so this wire has got this shield, but because it's quite heavy gauge wire, I might be able to get away with uh, actually uh, peeling it away. Um, oh, got distracted. What was I saying? <laughs> Can't remember. Um, but yeah, uh, and uh, another thing, it's important. I also I want a long wheelbase rather than the short one like mine. And the thing that I've noticed in driving my van is it doesn't have a side window. And so when you're backing up out of car parking or wherever, it's impossible, you, you, you're taking a risk because you can't see um, any car, oncoming cars. 
I've had a couple of close calls. So the next van really has to have a side window and yeah and a few other things i'd like a central console that i can put stuff in um, but it's not the end of the day i'd like a third seat if, if no central console so i can put three people in <laughs> they're all yeah yeah there's some uh, roof rack it would be nice um i did initially think oh what would be good would be barn doors on on the back but I've changed my mind with barn doors because looking at vans with barn doors, um, I've noticed that, uh, especially like tradesmen, when they're working out of the back of their van, the barn doors are open and they're working from the back. And when it rains, the inside of the van, it gets wet. And a lot of them show up, you can see corrosion. Uh, whereas, the flip up door like the one I've got um, you can actually you know I can work in the rain and the flip up door act, acts as a you know as a cover so yeah so I've gone off barn doors I want to get all this I wasn't even sure what was in there so th this is the conduit and you can see the giant plug and giant uh, cable here now it's got six cores but each one is insulated so it's still only a mid-grade wire. Yeah, got it. So this big wire, you know, I'm going to just throw that straight into the bin at the scrapyard. I can't, can't even remember where all this stuff come from, but gosh, this is. It would be reasonably high grade. It's got all these little, tiny little bits of aluminium ends, or uh, they're actually little brass bits. So because they're brass, even though they're not worth a lot, uh, kind of because our plugs have to be cut anyway, I'll take them and, you know, brass is worth almost twice as much as I'd sell the wire for, so why not? Yeah. So every couple of weeks I look at um, car sales online and uh, look for a van. And um, but yeah, at the moment, as I said, it's uh, with this uh, lockdown. It's just you can't really even go out and and um, take a look at fans so just gonna have to hold off all right so this is no it's actually a good thick wire oh I think I can get away with that since they're getting extra anyway. Yeah. Golly. Stuff so long. This is a data cable, but it's black. So just cut a one little plug and that'll go in. <coughs> Yeah, so I'm just worried that the prices of uh, everything has gone down. So I'm eager to go and check. So this is why I need to do some of these bins. Um, get them down.
and yeah then we'll, we'll be in business guys uh, when I can get back into the garage that's going to be you know a whole new kettle of fish well so you can see this wire um, it's you know quite thick copper wire it's much you know a lot of it's half stripped anyway it's worth a lot more than uh, mid-grade inch eh? so this stuff I prefer to strip go for the copper all right so I'll just continue on here uh, probably enough of me cutting cords and yeah, I would have already been to the scrapyard if it wasn't for the thought that they could be dropping a price. So before I go, I want to give them a call and uh, make sure it's going to be worth taking the insulated wire in. But, uh, All right, this will take a while. So, all right, guys, I'll see you at the scrapyard in a few seconds' time. <laughs> Okay.
This is low. And this is mid grade. Nice. Yeah, okay, so I've ended up finishing up at the scrapyard there. It was, uh, um, it was a bit strange. I've got this uh, older school Pentium 3 compact. I thought I'd just finish off scrapping. Yeah, um, I gave the uh, scrapyard a call before I went just to make sure that the prices haven't really gone down that much. And well, the insulated copper wire, it only went down five cents a kilo. So it's still $2.55. Uh, no problem there. And the, the thing that did go down was uh, the uh, clean pressing steel. Uh, it only went down three cents a kilo. So I was getting, uh, 23 cents a kilo 
and now I'm, I got 20 cents a kilo. But yeah, the strange thing uh, <laughs> was when I got there, there um guy at the Weybridge, he sort of stopped me as I'm coming through and he said, oh, do you know, do you have an ABN, you know, like a registered business? I said, yeah, 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 I've got ABN. And he said, oh, do you have a, a, uh, a work permit to uh, come on site? And I said, a work permit? No, I don't know what you're talking about. No one mentioned anything about work permit. And I said, where do I get it? He said, oh, ask your boss. <laughs> I said, well, I am the boss, mate. And, uh, I don't know anything about a work permit or where to get one or or what, you know. And uh, he said, oh, okay, well, yeah, next time you've got to bring a work permit. So, oh, I don't know. So if I've got to go back to the yard during this lockdown, um, I'll have to give him another call and, yeah, just ask him what, what I need to actually get because, you know, I haven't got any work permits. Uh, uh, I don't understand what the difference is, but, you know, if it's just a matter of me printing up something saying, <laughs> this is a work permit, I mean, I can do that, I just don't know what's required, you know, it's pretty bizarre. Um, already established that I had an ABN, a business registered business and all that so um and this is the business that i'm in a little bit of copper coil in that so i don't know what else they want so i'll have to work that out next time around um but it wasn't a bad load uh the clean pressing steel gosh you know a lot of those things uh you know those gray consoles it took a while to scrap all them out, I can tell you. And, uh, well, ended up, I had uh, 622 kilos of pressing steel, uh, 142 kilos of mid-grade insulated wire, and, what was it, 74 kilos of low-grade wire. So... Yeah, so about as much as expected. So I can't complain. Got rid of it. The main thing was to uh, get rid of the, obviously the steel. I just kept scrapping stuff out until uh, the van was pretty much full. I couldn't get much more in there. And I thought, well, that'll do. Happy with that. Uh, yeah, so... A job done. And now I can just uh, continue on. My next steel run will be dirty pressing steel. So going to do a lot more PCs. I'm glad I've, I got rid of a lot of the servers, so it's just a, a lot of um, big bulky stuff out the way. Uh, Don't know how to get this hard drive out. Huh, gotcha. Yeah, so I think uh, pretty much on the home straight of this uh, part three of the scrap marathon. Thought I'd just finish off with one of the PCs. Oh, well, at least we've got three RAMs. It's unusual. It's either one, two, or four. <laughs> I'll take it. Now, Pentium 3. So, no doubt, it'll be a 
green fiber. CPU. There we go. Nice. Ah. There we go. Just the green fiber. Cool bananas. All right. Quite a nice motherboard, and here's a good case where it doesn't actually have a BGA here. Um, yeah, so it looks like it's been partially depopulated, but not in this case. Yeah. There you go. That's that. Uh, just an aluminium power supply. couple of cards and a uh, little back plane board yeah so uh, huh, that's done I've just uh, exhausted myself um, hang on I'll, let me just uh, zoom out here <laughs> yeah this this bin was uh, full of cables and stuff um, this was the one that I started in um, in the second part of the um, marathon part two and I went down pretty far and then I ended up filling it back up with more stuff so there's an empty bin that's <laughs> it's almost well it's uh, over halfway full already so yeah but I'm getting there and what chickens want to get out uh yeah i was uh a bit a bit shocked when i saw so many switches sitting there i forgot all about them can't even remember where they came from but my goodness um uh, so i'm just going to continue on here i'm going to just scrap out some of these boring pcs use because they're nice and chunky ones i'm going to use these for throwing in uh dirty plugs and um dirty dirty steel and then just continue on here but uh geez that's going to be a session and a half that row of switches there at least I'll, i'm going to get good boards out of them being cisco but just didn't expect so many but behind this wall of pcs is the elusive shed that uh, I haven't gone into for probably a year. Um, it's full to the door of stuff. Um, half of it, the back half is okay. That's stuff in there that I've been uh, just keeping. But I can't even remember what I've actually filled it up with. And it's just going to be a lot of stuff that needs to be scrapped out. So uh, that's going to be a mission on its own. If I can get it, if I'm in that shed pulling stuff out then i'm i'm in uh paradise because uh that's going to be the last resort i still can't get into this door of the garage because uh there's like a half a ton of cable sitting on the floor so i'm gonna have to keep going with uh, processing cable so i'm going to do them pcs these ones here got a bunch at the back there and uh yeah just continue on i'm just uh trying to empty as many bins as i can and uh, to have them ready for when I start getting into the garage. Um, I'm just gonna need stuff, you know, like undercover area. So I put things into the empty bins temporarily till I work things out, you know, things like in boxes and packets that gotta work out what I'm doing with. <laughs> uh, yeah, but so I might start uh, part four of this marathon in actually processing just all these, just getting them getting them out the way and then hopefully finding a few little oddball things i've got a couple of projectors in here vintage ones i've got the real big vintage one that was like a quarter of a million dollars back in the day there's only like three in australia cinematic sort of thing so i haven't done anything with that remember that i picked that up street scrapping and i got another one there i'm not sure i might scrap that out just to have a little look uh yeah but uh, and then obviously just finish off 
uh, these PCs and stuff like that and just do a few oddball things. So there we go. I think, uh, yeah, and I, I've got to get back into those Cisco boards um, in boxes on wooden pl planks and clean all them out and uh, get rid of the boxes. And yeah, I'd just love to be able to get into my gold recovery stuff in the tubs. I've got a lot more stuff to sort into there. Uh, yeah, a lot of stuff. Still got to get rid of all this sort of stuff, the servers and that. Um, and uh, if they're good rams, I, you know, I might be able to sell the ram. And uh, all right, guys. Well, that's the end of part three of this scrap marathon. It's not the end for me. I'm just keep going. I've, uh, I'm pretty tired now. I've, I've, uh, after the scrapyard, I've, I spent about two and a half hours processing cords and. Um, a few PCs and that, so I need a rest. There's a neighborhood cat. Keep scrapping, guys. Have fun and uh, look out for the next video coming out as soon as I can get it done. <laughs> See you next time.